I was raised in a very working class community, but it was also very diverse. And I think the wonderful thing about the era I grew up in is it meant that I was just comfortable with difference because I was around it all the time. I'm Jun Sarpong, I'm a television presenter and the author of Diversify. And Diversify looks at the social, moral and economic benefits of diversity. You know, for myself, as a, as a working class woman, as a black woman, I'd always known things were not equal for me. I, it was quite obvious in comparison to some of the things that I got in comparison to some of my male uh, co-stars, but it was never something that I kind of thought about. I just got on with it. When you sort of look at the numbers and you're like, whoa, so even let's say the area of disability, which was I think the one that shocked me the most, one in five people in this country has a disability. And when you look at the fact that they are twice as likely to be out of work, and when we get to the area of neurodiversity and, and learning difficulties, it's even worse. Only 4% are in work out of the million people in this country that have a learning disability. We would never accept that from any other group. But when I started really researching um, gender, I thought, this is madness. We are losing out on so much potential. I'm seeing these amazing women that I'm around, and I'm thinking, my God, companies are not getting the most out of those women. Society's not getting the most out of those women. It's crazy. When we talk about gender, we often ignore the fact that there are huge chunks of the male population that are also discriminated against, that are not privileged, and we're not actually putting in place the sorts of um, programs that we need to bring those men up. And business has a key role in addressing these social issues. I think the number one thing where class is concerned, and this is so important, is for all of us to question our idea of what an intelligent sounding accent is. There are so many people in society that when they open their mouth straight away people make assumptions about who they are. But yet if that same person went to another country no one would even know. A lot of companies say they want to be inclusive but they're not even set up for it. So look at your office. If somebody that had mobility issues started in your company tomorrow, is your business actually set up for them to be there? Most companies, it's no. The other piece is neurodiversity. You know, we're only now beginning to understand autism and those that are on the spectrum. And often those people were considered the sort of outsiders in the workplace because we didn't really understand them. They were the ones that sort of weren't very social or didn't fit in. And I think it's really about making sure that everyone within in an organisation even knows what neurodiversity is. So that if somebody comes for an interview who perhaps may be on the spectrum, they are not the person that wants to maybe be going out for drinks in the pub and whatever, you know, they want to just get on with the job. It's allowing people to, to also be that. Businesses can do a lot. And one of the things that I would suggest uh, to begin with is to facilitate awkward conversations. Awkward conversations about race, awkward conversations around gender inequality, awkward conversations around inequality in general. Because often you don't realize what your colleague's experience might be. I think a manager on the team is probably the most important person after the CEO in making sure that this agenda is achieved. Because often what happens is you have a CEO announce a sort of a diversity and inclusion push, and it's not explained properly to the whole of the business as to why this matters and why this is important. And therefore it gets stuck in the middle. So your managers think, oh well, what's the point? And they don't actually follow through with it. And I think that it's really important for managers to see themselves as agents of change. And it's about the kind of legacy you want to leave behind. So rather than just thinking, oh, I want to just be good at my job, also think about the kind of impact you're going to have on society. First part is to actually talk to your team and say, look, let's all look around. We're not as diverse as we could be. I want your help 
to shake this up. I want this to be something that we all do and we understand why it matters. And then the second piece is to make sure that actually the team that's doing the interviewing is diverse. And if you haven't got that within an organization, go and source it outside. Go and find people who are doing interesting things in other industries and say, actually, will you help us be part of this interview process to make sure that you're getting a sort of a difference of opinion so that it's not only the same kind of person coming through. I think it's really important that we get this stuff right at work because if we get it right at work, it is going to impact the way we behave in our social lives. It's going to impact what we expect from policymakers. The idea of having everyone in society know that they can achieve to the best of their ability and if they don't, it's because of themselves, not because of societal structures that have prevented them from being all they can be. I mean, the idea of that just blows my mind. And I think that's something we should all be working towards.